Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. I'm coming to you from Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're at the transportation head, but there's actually a historic event that happened here that I thought was worth noting. It really has nothing to do with the main focus of our vlog today, but we are starting here. We're heading to Whiteville, and I wanted to share this little plaque, this historic, amazing plaque with you. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. You can see they have a little walkway that even leads you out to this and it's nothing that you would expect. It's actually a marker for Babe Ruth. Some say the greatest baseball player in the history of the game. And it says Babe Ruth hit his first home run in professional baseball March 1914, 135 yards northwest. In this town, George Herman Ruth acquired the nickname Babe. Now I think that was worth checking out. Now let's hit the road, we're going to Whiteville. This is a sad story that we're gonna talk about today, but we are going to visit the grave of Millie Christine. Hey there, buddy. Good morning, you up for an adventure today? You wanna to go with me? I'll take that as a yes. Now even though most would consider Millie, Christine, as two people, they actually considered themselves as one person. So that's why I called them Millie, Christine, McCoy, instead of Millie and Christine McCoy. Our first stop is actually that sign right over there near the freeway. Maybe not the greatest placement for a sign, but at least they have a sign. Millie, Christine, McCoy, they were the first black conjoined twins says they were born near here in 1851. They were exhibited in the US and Europe. Died in 1912. Their grave is five miles north. Yeah, they were born on a farm that was supposedly really close to here. And uh, their parents, of course, because it was 1851, were slaves. So their original Last name was McKay. There were Millie and Christine McKay. They were born conjoined. One weighed 12 pounds, the other weighed five pounds. And they would later change their last name to McCoy. But they're, un unfortunately for their parents, because they were slaves, the blacksmith that they were slaves for was able at the age of 10 months to sell them to a manager for a thousand dollars who wanted to put them in the sideshows and circuses and that's exactly what happened so they started out their career the age of 10 months being toured around the u.s and canada and various sideshows and freak shows being touted as the eighth wonder of the world the double-headed woman uh, sometimes known as the two-headed nightingale all kinds of different names let's go to their grave and I'll tell you more of their story it's nice that we can even go out and visit them because originally when they passed away 1912 they were buried in an unmarked grave and um, wasn't until I believe 1969 that they were moved to where this Welsh cemetery that we're gonna go to and given a headstone. You'll notice here as we're making our way out to the cemetery, another sign of respect that you named the street. The cemetery is on after them. It's Millie Christine. Or I should say her. Here we are, Welch's Creek Cemetery. It's out here, just past this farm. Very small cemetery. I think they're actually all the way down this bend. They're right over here, like the second from the end. Here they lie. It's fascinating the way they did this, their headstone. Now, of course, they were 200 pounds during their life because there were two bodies they had, each had their own set of two arms and two legs, so they were buried in a uh, double wide casket. But on the headstone, I find it fascinating that one is Millie Christine, and the other is Christine Millie. 
so I'll read both out of respect. It says, a soul with two thoughts, two hearts that beat as one. Millie Christine born July 11th, 1851 in Columbus County, North Carolina, a child of Jacob and Mia McCoy. I believe it was McKay from what I read. She lived a life of much comfort owing to her love of God and joy and following his commands. A real friend to the needy of both races and loved by all who knew her. And then Christine Millie says, died October 8th. Oh, okay, so this is interesting how they did it. So the first half, that they are doing it as one life, basically. So died October 8th and 9th, 1912. Fully resigned at her home, the place of her birth, and residence of her Christian parents. They that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Psalm 92, 13. So, their life, as I mentioned, they were sold at 10 months for $1,000 and entered the world of fairs and circus sideshows, were sold several times and eventually came into the possession of being owned by, I mean, it should be a really sad, sad story, but it, in some ways is kind of, I don't know, almost, you know, heartwarming that they were so happy because you would think being born as slave children, being sold away from their parents, being put on displays, being looked at as, you know, anything but normal and, you know, being in freak shows and things like that, you would think that you would long for a normal life or whatever. Maybe you would even feel like an animal, but they never did. They said that they were always happy. It's literally said as happy as the day is long. We feel like we share one heart and like I said, they said they even if they could be separated, they wouldn't want to be because they just thought of themselves as one person. So Millie Christine McCoy buried here and now, you know, not in an unmarked grave. People can come out and pay their respects. Rest in peace. Joseph Pearson Smith. And he was actually basically contracting them out to different sideshows. So while he owned them, I believe he paid $30,000 for them. And he had them exhibiting at P.T. Barnum's American Museum in New York City, which was a big deal. It was like the, um, the winter home of the circus. And it was a big full on four or five floor museum at the time. So they were being paid very well, but there was a man put in charge of watching them and he actually stole them and secretly hid them away. And they were inspected by people in the medical field and secretly would be exhibited in different places for short amounts of time for several years. Um, even being documented being in Philadelphia and I guess um, Joseph Pearson Smith got word on where they were when he was coming for them the owners the then owners of the girls took her flew her to Europe and started touring her around Europe and um, eventually Joseph Pearson Smith and the girls biological mother had to go to Europe and fight to get the girls back. Now, this actually went to court and the men that owned the girls and took them over, basically who had stolen them, hired an African-American woman to go to court and claim that she was their mother. But the law prevailed and the girls were brought back to the United States and ended up at the age of 18 writing a book about their life where they would say even if they could be separated they wouldn't want to they really were very very happy and they thought of themselves as one person and when they came back to the united states 
Joseph Pearson Smith had to hide them because of the Civil War. He didn't want um, them to be taken. So he had to hide them away in Spartanburg. And during that time, he and his wife would educate the girls. He would actually teach them how to sing and dance, how to read, how to speak five different languages, including German, French, Italian. And that would become part of their ability as performers. Whereas early on, people were fascinated by the fact that they were conjoined just below the shoulder blades all the way down to the pelvis. But now they actually had some talents. And so they were out performing, making a lot of money. And eventually, because of the end of the Civil War, and the Emancipation Proclamation, they were given their freedom, but they decided to still remain with Joseph Pearson Smith and his wife, and they managed their career. They were making very good money. They were making like $600 a week, and he still kind of took care of them, made sure they were okay. The girls would tour all over the country. They focused their act not on being the sideshow anymore, but on being... These, this two-headed performer, they would call themselves the two-headed nightingale, um, sometimes the Carolina twins, but they would make their way back over to Europe and they would eventually perform in front of Queen Victoria and Queen Victoria apparently gave them diamond hair clips, which I thought was pretty cool. So they did end up making pretty good money, built themselves a house here in North Carolina, out in this area, and then eventually retired, happily retired. It was um, sad. The, uh, you know, as you can imagine, I had just done a video on the Hilton sisters and when one dies, you know, when they're conjoined, it's only a matter of time before the other dies. So that was sadly what happened in this case. Unfortunately, at the age of 61, Millie contracted tuberculosis and passed away on October 8th. And apparently the doctors gave uh, Christine morphine to help speed up the process. And within 10 hours, she also passed away the following day. Plus it's kind of hard to imagine what it would be like to be a, per a black performer a woman black performer said that she weighed about 200 pounds and was very graceful when you would watch. That was one of the um, things that people found so fascinating about her was that for as many limbs as she had, she did everything extremely gracefully and was very almost had this magnetism when you would watch. But I can't even imagine what that would be like to be a woman black performer in the 1800s you know, touring around the country, what, what kind of treatment they must have received. Well, we're gonna call it a day from just outside of Whiteville, North Carolina, the home of the girls, or the home of Miss Millie Christine McCoy. Out of respect, that's the way she saw herself as one person. I will give her the respect. Rest in peace, we'll see you all next time. Have a great night, goodbye.